Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. Today is the start of a new reading vlog where I'm gonna be reading four mysteries and thrillers that I have for review. kind of a reading vlog series that I'm doing. I really enjoy it and you guys seem to like it pretty well too. It's a nice way for me to get through some of the arcs or books that I have for review and also give you guys some recommendations on upcoming releases, grouping them by type or genre. So in today's video I'm going to be reading four books that are mysteries or thrillers and we've got a lot of variation in type which I think should be fun. I have one physical arc that I'm reading and this book is already out so I'm a little late getting to it. Life got much more out of control than I had anticipated but I am reading it now for this video. This is House Apollo by Crystal Sutherland. I love the cover so much. This was sent to me by Penguin Teen and this is a YA thriller with paranormal elements. I have started reading this but I haven't gotten very far. I've read about the first 30 pages so far and I'm very very intrigued. It follows the youngest of three sisters and all of them when they were young kids disappeared and nobody knows what happened to them but when they returned they were very different and strange. They have these strange scars on their throat, their hair is all white and their eyes have turned black and weird things happen around them. And so we are now following the youngest sister who is a senior in high school and strange things are starting to happen again. It's definitely got like creepy vibes to it. I think maybe there's some like fae stuff going on it's set in the contemporary world and it's more of a thriller. So this is the first book that I'm going to be reading. I'm also going to be reading The Ivies by Alexa Dunn, which I am very excited for. For full transparency's sake, I consider her to be somewhat of an online friend, so my feelings may end up being somewhat biased on this. I am also going to be having her on my channel for like a live stream interview and discussion, which I'm really excited about. But that said, I have read a couple of her books in the past and I've really enjoyed them. They're very soapy and fun YA, and this is her first thriller. I'm really looking forward to it because it's totally the tropes I enjoy. It follows teenagers at an elite school. The main character is somewhat of an outsider and I think there's like murders happening. So I'm really excited for this one. Then for one that's like mystery thriller slash horror, I'm gonna be reading The Mary Shelley Club by Goldie Moldovsky. This is another YA book that's being called Scream meets Karen M. McManus about a high school book club with an obsession with horror. And I think people end up dying, so very interested. It says it's super twisty. I'm looking forward to reading this one. And then lastly for a sort of historical fantasy version of a mystery I'm going to be reading Master of Gin by P. Jelly Clark. It's the first full-length novel in the series and I've read both of the novellas and really enjoyed them. This is set in an alternate history Cairo with like some steampunk elements where there's like gin and we're following a female detective who investigates like supernatural crimes and murders and stuff. I don't know the exact details of the plot of this book but I do know it has some kind of a mystery element to it so I'm looking forward to that. So there you go. Those are the four books that I am planning to read for this video and I will let you guys know once I've made some progress. Today I'm going to start doing some reading in House of Hollow and I will let you guys know how I get on. See you soon. Good morning. Sorry I didn't do much of an update last night, but I did make some progress reading House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland. This is where I'm at. I'm really enjoying it so far. It's definitely creepy. Weird things are happening. We're getting more of the backstory of like what exactly sort of happens surrounding the disappearance of the sisters, even though we don't know what happened while they were gone. And now the oldest sister has disappeared, perhaps under mysterious circumstances. It's very spooky. It's like horror, thriller. I don't know. It's an interesting genre mashup, but I'm really enjoying it. And then I also started, barely, I'm not far into it yet, but I did start reading The Mary Shelley Club by Goldie Moldovsky. So far, I'm really intrigued. The prologue follows our main character, who is a Latinx teen girl, where something bad had happened. I think she was like assaulted in her house or something. I don't know. We don't know the details, but whatever it is caused her and her mom to move from Long Island to New York City. And she's now at like a fancy prep school where her mom is a teacher and doesn't have a lot of friends. And there's like some spooky things that I think maybe are going to go on. They tried doing a seance at a party. 
So far, it's interesting. Um, so I'm going to continue reading things. One exciting thing that's happening today is I'm getting my first dose of the COVID vaccine. Yay! So I'm going to take you guys along with me for that. And then I don't know if I'll put much footage in here of this because it's really probably not what y'all are here for. But after I get my COVID shot, there's a sale happening at Sephora right now and I need to stock up on some basics. So I'm going to head over there. Then uh, I probably will hit up a bookstore since I'm going to be out anyway. It's going to be fun. Let's go. We did it! Yay! Um, I'm hungry and it's lunchtime, so I'm gonna get some lunch and go to Sephora. Come book shopping with me. Barnes & Noble, wow, so many books. Ooh, Mexican Gothic. I love that one. Let's go upstairs, more book. For floors, the newly Bardugo. Weird color, ah that way madness lies. Look, I'm in the acknowledgements, OMG. Here are the books I bought today. This one is for book club. All right, so here's my haul. I have been putting off buying a bunch of stuff until the sale so I could get 15% off. We have skincare, which gets more expensive the older I get, hair care and like stuff. This is the fun part. I love their uh, sparkly eyeshadows. Fenty Beauty is always a good bet. CC cream, primer, mascara, lipstick, etc. So there it is. Hello, it's getting a little bit tricky remembering which footage is which for which vlog because I'm doing two vlogs at once but I got the first dose of my vaccine um my arm is like slightly sore at the injection site I mostly feel fine maybe a little bit more tired than I normally would but not bad yeah I'm just gonna kind of take it easy the rest of the day and uh do some reading. Good morning. It's the next day. Last night I finished reading House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland and I wanted to give it a little bit of time before I talked about it because I was left with kind of mixed feelings at the end of this book. So I gave it some thought before coming to talk to you guys about it. This book is really interesting. It's definitely a page turner and I appreciate the creep factor especially for a YA book because this is definitely a mystery horror is what I would call it. It. it relies really heavily on nature-based horror. So think things like rot and mold and creepy plants and insects. Like there's quite a bit of that. There's some body horror associated with that. There's gore. Um, you know, and I, I kind of like seeing some of that kind of horror get into a YA story. It was definitely a page turner. I wanted to keep reading to see what was going to happen. However, I feel like I got to the end and was a little bit unsatisfied and it took me a while to think through why that is. And I think there are a few things. One thing is that this book is oddly repetitive. I feel like similar plot points happen more than once throughout the book and not in a way where I think it's intended to be like a big thematically rich thing, but just as in things are kind of I don't know, getting recycled, plus the language is very repetitive. So while early on in the book, I found a lot of the horror stuff to be really creepy. By the time we reached the end, it had been over described so frequently through the book that I was just kind of over it and didn't find it creepy anymore. So I feel like less would have been more in this case. And I'm one that enjoys descriptive books. I like lyrical purple prose, but this was not that. This was like ad nauseum describing the same horrific things using the same words over and over and over again for like lengthy passages and I, I think it just got to be too much. Added to all of that is the fact that the ending is pretty predictable and I don't think I would have as much issue with having a predictable ending if the book hadn't been so repetitive but because there was so much repetition in what was happening I think this book either needed to have been shorter, like maybe a novella length would have been really effective, or it needed more twists and turns. 
and I, I think because it wasn't either of those things the ending just left me kind of dissatisfied. There's also a couple of things she doesn't hear some of which are a little spoilery so I'm not going to go into great detail but I didn't love the way she handled it. One thing that is repeated pretty frequently in this book is there's a lot of focus on these three sisters having this kind of like thin white very angular form of beauty in combination with their tendency to binge eat large quantities of food and still not feel full. And while I understand having read the entire book what the author was going for with that, I still didn't necessarily like the way that it was done. And I would say content warnings for disordered eating and body dysmorphia in some scenes. <sighs> yeah, I don't know, like in a book for teenagers, I just I think this could have been handled more gracefully. It didn't seem thoughtfully executed. The other thing about this, and again I can't go into a lot of detail because spoilers, this book uses suicide in a way that I didn't love. Yeah, there's not much I can say about it except that the arc of that subplot made me feel like the ending didn't go far enough with some things. If you read this you'll know what I'm talking about. I don't want to spoil things but yeah, so there were just like some things I didn't love about it, even though it's definitely compulsively readable. It's got some really, really cool, creepy, magical ideas and moments. And if this book had either been shortened to be like a novella length or had twists and turns added to it, I would have probably really loved it. As it is, I gave it three stars. It was kind of middle of the road for me. So would I recommend this? Um, I would say definitely check content warnings on it. If this seems up your alley, maybe. Like, I'm not upset I read it. There were definitely things I loved about it, and I liked some of these ideas about liminal spaces and falling through gaps in the world and, like, doorways that lead somewhere else. And, like, I don't know, there was a lot of really cool stuff. Um, It just, it left me wanting some things. So, yeah, like I would recommend it to some people, but not everybody, I guess. Then I am 30 something percent of the way through the Mary Shelley Club. And um, I, how am I feeling about it? I don't know. It's another one that's a little bit of a mixed bag. I think it is interesting and it is definitely kind of a love letter to horror movies. There's a lot of that kind of wrapped in. At this point, I don't think I would call this a horror genre book, although maybe by the end my feelings on that would change. I feel like it's a mystery thriller with some nods to horror appreciation, I guess you could say. I am having some kind of believability things with it and I'm not sure why. I'm trying to put my finger on what it is. So basically what we've learned is that our main character had ended up killing somebody in self-defense and has tried to escape that part of her life, restarting at this new place, but she's in this very privileged school where she's kind of an outsider. And she finds out about the Mary Shelley Club, which is this super secret group of students at her new school who love horror and kind of play these pranks or these games reenacting horror tropes, pretty much. And she thinks that maybe this will help give her like that adrenaline rush she needs to better cope with her trauma from the past. For some people it's coming out of wanting revenge, for some people it's really coming out of a place of privilege, and it's interesting but I, I, I don't know. I guess I'm like there is some level of suspension of disbelief I'm having trouble with because apparently this club has pulled off these like pretty intense scenarios and nobody has figured out that it was them and I don't know like it hasn't really sold me on being able to believe that they could actually do the things they say they can do so it's kind of like this hand wavy like yeah they just do these things and they figure out people's deepest fears and are able to like put them in those positions the concepts are interesting I just think I'm not quite buying into believing that it could actually happen in our world with these students, if that makes sense. Also, it's definitely not nice and the morality is super gray, which I think it's intended to be, but 
yeah anyway so I, uh, another one that's a bit of a mixed bag one other thing quick update this is the day after i got the vaccine for anybody who's wondering how i'm doing i feel pretty good my upper arm is still a bit sore but otherwise i feel fine i feel normal and yeah doing well <laughs> Hey guys, so update, um, I made it about 35% of the way into the Mary Shelley project and unfortunately I think I'm going to DNF this one. They just did their first full prank with our main character as part of the group and it was just really cruel and nasty and I know it's supposed to be, but I think the problem is that all of the characters think it's funny and I... it. It's making me very uncomfortable. I'm not enjoying reading about it. I think I, like, I really dislike cruelty for the sake of cruelty. And um, I, I think I might get on better with this if there was a character that I could sympathize with or was rooting for. But that's not how I'm feeling. At this point, I kind of hate all of the characters. And I don't want to read anymore. So I'm not going to... <laughs> I'm just, I'm going to DNF it. Sorry, guys. You know, everybody is different in what does and doesn't work for them. So this book might totally work for you depending on your taste. I just, I can't. The, um, the prank that they played was, it's just, uh, it like breaks my heart. Even if like the person they're doing it to is kind of a jerk. They played a prank on a guy who's this popular dude who, is deathly afraid of clowns because at a seventh birthday party he sat on a clown's lap and had an accident and the clown like freaked out and was awful and he's been terrified ever since and so they did all these clown related things to like scare him and I just it it feels gross I don't like it I don't like the feeling of reading this kind of thing uh you know again I think this is very much a personal preference thing but yeah, sorry, I am DNFing this one at 35%. So, um, I think I'm going to move on and try the Ivies, which I'm guessing I will do better with. And and I I will I will just say this, part of it might be that I don't think the author has done enough to make me really sympathize with the main character. I don't think we know enough about her history. We don't know that much about her history. We mostly know who she is now other than vague ideas about this traumatic event that she experienced and what she did. But I do see that everything that she does is kind of nasty. And yeah, it's 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 hard. <laughs> it like yeah, I don't know. I'll have to give some thought to this. If I have any like grand revelations later on about why I really disliked this as much as I did, I will let you know. But we're going to DNF it. We're going to move on to the IVs and hopefully this will go better. I'm guessing it's going to. So I will check back in with you guys later. Bye. Hey guys, so it is Saturday night. I have been reading the IVs. I'm 40% of the way through it and I wanted to check in because... First of all, I'm really enjoying it. It's definitely turning into more of a mystery than what I was expecting, kind of murder mystery mixed with college admissions stuff, like people doing all kinds of wild stuff to try to like get into Ivy League schools. I like that our main character is kind of an outsider and she doesn't necessarily know the lengths that some of her friends who are more privileged have gone to. It's set at this like fancy boarding school and they're all applying to college and then somebody dies. Um, so I'm really enjoying it. I have a theory about what I think happened and who I think the murderer is. And so I'm going to tell you. Oh, okay. So spoilers because... Well, maybe. I don't even know if this is true. I'm just going to tell you because I want to put it on camera before I finish the book what my theory is. But my theory is that she was having an affair with the at the school. And the reason that the cameras were all off is because they had planned to meet up in the boathouse. And then something happened killing her. That's my theory. So we'll see if I'm right. I'm enjoying them though. Good morning, guys. So I finished reading the Ivies and 
It was a lot of fun. It was really interesting. It had plenty of twists and turns, which I appreciated. I did guess a couple of things, but there was a lot of stuff that I didn't guess ahead of time, or at least not until closer to the end. So that was definitely fun. It kept me like, oh, like there's definitely some like gasp worthy moments, which I think is a lot of fun. And it has a lot of interesting things to say as a book about the pressures of college admissions, about privilege, about the racist ways that people will sometimes talk about things like affirmative action or like assume that a person of color got into a school because of their identity. There's just a lot of like interesting stuff wrapped up into here. Yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I also have to say, I think this is probably the best book Alexa Dunn has written so far. I've really enjoyed her other books and I think the premises of them were fun and they were soapy. This was like really, really good. And I think it's cool too because it's clear, I mean, I know from watching her channel and discussions and stuff that Alexa works helping people with college admissions, with essays and stuff. And you can definitely see that knowledge filter into the book and understanding how things actually work for people today, which is different from how they used to work. Yeah, this is really fun. I don't want to spoil anything, but I think if you're looking for a good murder mystery mixed with Mean Girls type high school drama, this is really, really great. I also actually enjoyed the ending of this one pretty well. Um, I prefer mysteries and thrillers that don't end super abruptly. Excuse my children. I prefer mysteries and thrillers that don't end super abruptly where you find out what happened and then that's it. I like a little more... I don't know, discussion of like what comes next. And you do get that in the IVs. That's probably going to be a taste thing. Like some people are going to like that. Some people aren't. They're going to feel like it like draws it out too far. But I, <laughs> but I really, they're so loud. Oh my God. Y'all. Um, anyway, all this to say, I really enjoyed the Ivies a lot. In terms of rating, this is something where I'm going to have to give it a little bit of thought and go write my review before I decide exactly where I'm going to come in. But to be honest, it's probably going to be somewhere in like the four and a half to five star range for me. I had a really good time with this book. I liked the way that she wrote it. Um, it definitely worked for me and I thought the commentary was also really interesting. So yeah, I, I liked it. I will say you know, as I mentioned earlier, I'm probably a little bit biased. I do like Alexa and consider her to be something of a friend, but genuinely liked this, had a good time with it, and I think it's going to be a crowd pleaser. I feel like people are going to enjoy this. It's very juicy, too. Like, there's... I, I like how juicy she made it. There's a lot of, of things. Um, I will put content warnings in my review. Some of them are a little spoilery, so I'm not going to put them in this video, but when I write my Goodreads review, I'll include some content warnings. But yeah, I thought it was really good. So definite success on this one. And this is how you can tackle darker subject matter, I, I think, in a YA book and make it work for me. This is like Mary Shelley Club was not... Well, I mean, they're also different books, but they are both in some ways similar. They're both tackling privileged kids at a privileged school with an outsider. They both involve like darker themes, but this one does it in a way that's more soapy. And even though there is a scene where you see a dead body, it's treated more like like an Agatha Christie type murder mystery in terms of the way it's handling that part of it. It's not super gory. It's not. Yeah. Anyway, all that to say, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was great. Next up, I'm going to be reading The Master of Gin by P. Jelly Clark, which should be a lot of fun. And I will check back in with you guys and let you know how that goes. Today is Sunday, and normally I would probably spend more time reading. However, it's a little bit unusual because my husband and I are going to be going on a day date for most of the day, celebrating his birthday. We're going to Coney Island. So maybe, maybe I will uh, bring you guys along and take a few few little clips of our day out together. And then tonight I've got Dungeons and Dragons with my booktube buds. So I don't know how much reading I'm actually going to get done until tomorrow. We'll see. But I'll check back in with you guys later. It is Tuesday and I am almost done with A Master of Gin. I have not been super great about vlogging reading this, partly because 
I was just trying to rush and get through as much of it last night as I could. I'm almost done with it. Um, so I will do my full thoughts once I finish and kind of get myself together for the day and wrap up this video. But um, I'll just say I like it but don't love it. It is his first full length novel and it kind of shows it is longer than I think it should be. It's definitely more slow paced. And also I... I, I feel like it took too long for the main character to figure out the sort of whodunit because it's got a murder mystery plot to it with like Jin and Ifrit. It's cool. Like I like the world a lot. I like the history parts. I like the way that he has Cairo in it. I love the main character. Fatma is wonderful and is always very well dressed in these bespoke suits and I just love it a lot. Um, but... I feel like she's really smart and should have figured out sooner who the murderer was. Like it became very, very obvious to the reader well before she figured it out. And I don't know, I think that should have happened earlier. So I'm like at the very end, I have uh, like 13% of the book left. So it's kind of like the final showdown thing happening so to speak so I will check back in with you guys once I'm finished all right so I finished Master of Jin. I'm here to wrap up the video um sorry I didn't take more footage in the middle of reading it uh, so basically I liked a lot of what he's doing in it I love the main character I like the setting I like the world building I like the fact that it's a mystery plot our main character is this wonderful wonderfully dapper female investigator who always has these like snazzy suits on. I like how this book is dealing with a lot of big issues. It tackles things like racism and colorism and colonization and intersectional feminism. And I liked the fact that in this book Fatima, even though she doesn't necessarily want one at the beginning, is assigned a new partner who's another woman and a hijabi. And it kind of pushes back on these ideas that religious women or women who wear hijab can't also be feminists and can't also be, uh, you know, competent in their jobs. And so there's a lot that this book is doing that I think is really good. I do think it's too long. The pacing is a bit of an issue. And again, as I mentioned in my last clip, I it was like a little annoyed that Fatima in the story took so long to figure out who the villain is when the to the reader, it is very, very clear from much earlier on. And I was like, okay, this feels out of character. I feel like she would have figured it out sooner. Um, so yeah, a little bit of a mixed bag. I think there's a lot that's really great about this. And I think part of it is it's his first time writing a full length book. I ended up landing on three and a half stars, rounded it up to four. It's like right in that like three and a half to four star range. There's a lot to love about it. I will for sure continue to read more from this author in the future, um, but this book was a little bit of a mixed bag even though I mostly enjoyed it. Uh, there were parts that definitely tended to drag. So um, how has this vlog gone? This has been an interesting vlog. I feel like less successful in terms of how much I've enjoyed all of the books that I've read than previous ones. House of Hollow was a little bit of a mixed bag for me. There were things that I loved about it and things that didn't work so well. I gave this one three stars. I DNF'd one of the books that I was reading for this, The Mary Shelley Club, so clearly that was not a hit. Master of Gin, I liked but didn't love. Again, a little bit of a mixed bag. This one was a three and a half, closer to a four star. And then probably the hit for me was The Ivies by Alexa Dunn, which I just had a really great time with and thought was um, very much what I wanted it to be. So hopefully this was interesting and useful for some of you guys as you are trying to make decisions about which of these new releases you are interested in picking up. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on anything I talked about in this video. And for your question of the day, Tell me something about something you really enjoy in a mystery or thriller. What is something, a trope or a specific book or a way of doing things, a character type, something that really will draw you to a book and make you love it? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. And if you want to support the work of the channel, check out the Patreon link down below or check out channel memberships. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time.